Hello. Um, I'm really sorry I cannot join you join you live and I have to record that uh, short brief presentation today. Um, I would like to talk a bit about the method of natural beekeeping I'm uh, using in my farm. Uh, I'm an organic farmer uh, using techniques of um, permaculture and uh, a bit of Rudolf Steiner uh, biodynamics. And I would like to talk concentrate mainly on the short description of biodynamic methods in um, uh, beekeeping. Uh, but first I would like to share a bit of information what the biodynamics is. Uh, so my beekeeping method is a combination of natural beekeeping and Rudolf Steiner biodynamic uh, theory. Um, it's ba it based on astronomical and astrological observation and that observation is a key for planning and executing all activities according to the uh, biodynamic calendar. Uh, for years, I used the uh, biodynamic, biodynamic calendar for my gardening, farming, and beekeeping activities. Uh, the picture shows the calendar I'm using is a, a Maria Stone uh, biodynamic almanac. It's translated into the many many languages, uh, so probably you can buy it in your country. Uh, the front cover may be different, but the, the content will be exactly the same. Uh, my beekeeping is based on trust that nature and the bees are smarter than us, and we do not have to intervene in every moment of the beehive life. So I leave a lot of freedom to the bees. Um, our main task in beekeeping is actually to react. If we see something is very, very wrong. Uh, for example, the queen is dead or the weather conditions do not allow bees to collect enough uh, nectar or pollen uh, or food. Uh, for example, it could be a prolonged winter and uh, there was a sunny and warm February and the bees woken up and then the frost came back and we can observe that they could be starving, then yes, uh, we have to save the hive, but try to try to avoid disturbing the bees. Uh, think twice before you open the hive. Uh, that's my main rule. Um, I will try to explain why uh, it's very well connected to the biodynamics theories for the periods of time when we actually open the hive. Um, so the activities are planned depending on what we would like to achieve. Uh, there are four elements very well known to the witches. Um, and we have to consider every time which element is a predominant during the day we want to do something in the hive. So there is a fire element, which in biodynamics is, a, uh, is called fruit, uh, fruit time. There is a water element, which is called leaf time. And there is an earth element, which is called root time and air element, which is called flower or light. Uh, time. I don't have enough time to go too deep into the details, um, but 
that knowledge is not really necessary at the beginning because you can read everything of the biodynamic calendar. Calendar will show you which days are the fire, water, earth, or air. Uh, the calculations are done for you there. Uh, of course, it's always good to know why um, uh, it is like that, but uh, this presentation will be too short to explain all the details. Um, if you buy the biodynamic and a biodynamic calendar, most probably at the beginning, there will be a, a very detailed explanation of the theory. Um, I also recommend uh, Maria's Tune uh, books, which are, in my opinion, excellent. And this lady was doing observations for over 40 years. So this is very, very practical knowledge. Um, and now, how can we apply uh, the biodynamics into beekeeping? Um, bee family lives in the hive and uh, it's isolated from the outside uh, world. Um, the bees are waxing the hive with the bee party to minimize outside influences. Uh, so every time we open the, the hive, we disturb that order which is already in the hive. Um, the only contact the outside world are the volatile bees, uh, the one which are flying and bringing the nectar or pollen. Uh, and every time we open, we disturb that order, letting the cosmic, uh, more astronomical, astrological influences into the hive. Uh, we can use the biodynamic knowledge to invite the bees to do certain activities. Uh, I don't like to use the word force the bees, but we actually kind of manipulate the impulse or depending on what we would like them to do. Uh, it will be explained uh, below. So we disturb the bees in certain times, uh, fruit, root or flower, which was mentioned in the previous page. And just to achieve our goals, um, the only period we should avoid to intervene is a leaf time, the water element time. And that, that those days we should leave the bees alone. And uh, they want to mind their own business and just, just don't touch the hive unless this is some emergency uh, on those days. So the root days, the earth, uh, the, the, the earth element, if we open the hive in those days, the bees will intensify their building impulses. So they will start building the wax foundations. Um, they're gonna start waxing the hive. It will be uh, just building impulse. If we open the hive in the flower or uh, light days, which is the air element, bees will increase reproductive activities. Uh, let's say we see some weak uh, bee family. Uh, we would like them to um, reproduce a bit more and make the family stronger. Then we open the hive and um, do our activities on those days. And uh, the impulse will stay with the bees until the next time we open the hive again. So we can kind of change the impulse we would like to. If the family is strong enough and we would like them to collect the, 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 the honey for us, then we're gonna open them in different time, which is the fruit dates. Uh, bees will start collecting more nectar if we give them this impulse. 
And as I mentioned, the leaf days we should avoid and do not disturb uh, bees uh, and do not, especially do not uh, harvest the honey uh, from the hive. And we can see it because the bees will be more aggressive that time. So uh, just leave them alone and they would like to mind their own businesses. Um, and what the natural beekeepers should do, uh, or what actually I'm doing in my um, in my uh, beekeeping, uh, I let the bees build as they wish. Uh, natural honeycombs are just so beautiful. You can see on the picture; it's like a little sun. Um, sheets of the bee wax are. Uh, a lot of persons use the, use the sheets of the bee wax into the frames to uh, show the bees what they should build. I don't do that. I like these natural shapes and uh, they're just so beautiful. Um, of course, nature, nature doesn't like the straight uh, lines. So the bees will uh, make the, make the, the combs really different shapes and the, the sizes of the cells will be different as well. Uh, I don't have enough time to go too much into the detail um, on that one, but um, yeah, that's, that's what I do in my, uh, in my beekeeping method. Uh, Biodiversity, that's very, very important. Do not let bees use only one plant for a nectar. Uh, plants are their uh, pharmacy. So they are like us. If you eat the healthiest tomatoes ever, but you're gonna eat them for half a year, of course, you're not gonna have enough nutrition because you need different um, kind of foods. It's the same related to the bees. Biodiversity is a key. So leave as many plants as possible in your garden. Look for the new plants, which will be um, very good for your bees. And stop seeing the weeds and the trees as a potential food for your bees. Don't look at them as a weed. This is potential food for your bees. Um, Another thing is minimize cutting the grass in your garden. Every wheat is a potential nectar or pollen, pollen for your bees. Uh, cut just the communication tracks if you really have to, uh, and leave it. Leave it. You can cut it on the autumn when the bees finish their activities, but they, there are a lot of different bugs which will really thank you if you don't cut the, the grass. I think the natural meadow is just, just beautiful and alive. The grass, when you cut it, is kind of dead. Uh, it's just a green carpet, but it doesn't have any colors. Uh, in, in my garden, I always leave some wild patches. Uh, as you see, I planted some cucumbers here and cut a bit of grass around so the weeds are not coming into them. But all around, I just leave wild. If I don't have to cut it, I don't cut it. Um, pretty much the nature, if you leave her alone, she will give you every possible answer. You just have to sit quietly ask the question and ask how the nature solves the problem. And surely you can, as a part of the nature, you can find the answer for any possible question. Um, yeah, and that, that what I would like to share with you. Um, Morgana and Luisa probably will post my, um, 
my uh, Facebook page of my organic farm. Uh, from now on, I promise I will try to uh, write as well in English. Uh, so far, I didn't have any uh, foreign speaking followers, but if someone will be interested, it's no problem, I will also translate it to the English. Um, yeah, and thank you very much for your attention. I hope this is not the last time I'm uh, with you. And yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>